So over the past year or so, I have been on the search for the perfect RF lens collection for wedding days, and I think I've finally nailed it. I'm gonna break it down lens by lens for you right now. Hey there, welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Caitlin, I'm excited that you're here. This is a place where we like to empower photographers to build profitable and purposeful businesses while also letting you in on the behind the scenes of our day-to-day -day life. And if you have been around here for any length of time, you know that gear talk is not my favorite. And you're like, why is there so much gear talk on your channel? It's because Ty makes me do it and it's great for the algorithm. And I think this is worthwhile information that even though I don't love talking about it, I think it's helpful for you, some of you to hear about gear from from someone who is not a specs techie. I'm not obsessed with it, but it's necessary to understand it and to make wise decisions. So I have basically been on a journey to figure out what RF lens, what needs to change, what do I desire to change about my lens lineup uh, for the, after my switch to the R6. Now I started my journey saying I will never, I don't need RF lenses. I definitely am not buying all brand new lenses, at least not right now. I'm thrilled with what I'm experiencing with my old EF lenses with the adapter on the R6. They became new lenses to me, they were amazing. If that's all your budget allows for, totally fine. Don't worry about upgrading to RF lenses, but there are a lot of people out there wondering if I am gonna upgrade, what is a lineup that I should start pursuing? And I'm gonna share with you my lineup and what I love, and you can make choices and make decisions based off of um, what my advice may be, or just add some of my tips to your decision-making process to maybe make it a little bit easier about what lens may come next for you. Okay, so let's start with the camera body, which you probably already know what it is. It is the Canon. R6, I switched to this like a year and a half ago, two years ago, right when they first came out. And I have three of them, one for me, one for Michael, and one is a backup. Switching to this camera was a game changer for me. 13 years into being a photographer, it was a good upgrade for me. It made me kind of fall in love with my job all over again. So let's look at the card situation. Everyone asks about this. I don't know why, but Ty says I need to tell you. So it's a SanDisk. Uh, it is 64 gigabyte. We also have 128 gig. This is 170 megabytes per second. It's an Extreme Pro and it works just great. Ty says also you don't need the fancy ones. This works just fine for me and I shoot ridiculously fast and it works great. So that is the camera body situation. Big fan. If you are finding yourself having questions about the R6 you want me to answer, I have an entire playlist on this channel just dedicated to the R6 and that transition for me, and you can go watch that now. All right, so let's get started. This is the cornerstone lens of my collection. It is the 28-70 to 2.0 RF lens, and this lens, if I'm being honest, is really the game changer, even more so. I mean, you gotta have the RF to go with this, but the camera body was great, but this is what really changed my style of shooting in a way, it changed the way we pack for wedding days. This lens is a zoom lens. I don't, I've never shot with zoom lenses until this season of my career. Um, because it's 2.0 and it has good compression, it looks like a 50 millimeter lens. So I actually have gotten rid of the 50 millimeter prime lens and the 35 millimeter prime lens um, from my collection that I go to wedding days with. I don't take them anymore, which is just baffling. I've done a lot of videos about this because I love it and because so many of you have questions about it. So there's a lot more information on our channel about this as well. I have other lenses in my wedding lineup, but I could shoot an entire wedding day with this lens and I have shot an entire wedding day with this lens. Side note, you can watch me shoot an entire wedding day with this lens uh, through KJ All Access, which is our behind the scenes membership for photographers um, with over 3000 users. So you can join those photographers um, or you can try it for free. So link below for that. This lens is definitely the cornerstone lens. It's a lens that if I forgot this at home on a wedding day, uh, I would be in a lot of trouble. Can't survive without it. Next is my favorite lens. I love, that. that is a favorite lens too. But this is like the special golden child of my RF collection. It was the golden child of my EF lens collection as well. It is the 85 millimeter 1.2 and I, I am obsessed with it. And if you think that the 1.4 um, L series lens, the EF version is amazing, this blows it out of the water in my opinion. I love this lens because we actually did a video recently where we compared this lens to the 28 to 70 at 70 millimeters um, and, and it was, it was very, very different. You could very, very much tell a difference. And so I love that because it means that my favorite lens can remain a favorite lens. It has not been replaced by the 28 to 70. This lens, when do I use this on a wedding day? I use this on a wedding day. We have 
we have this information as well out there on our channel, but I use it when I need high compression, when I want the background to just fade away, when I want it to seem like um, my subject is tack sharp and then the background is just right behind their head. I use this lens when I have normally some space and some freedom to be able to step back and create cool composition. This lens eliminates a lot of really negative distractions in the background and it just brings a level of epicness to my portraits that I just can't get any other way. So it's almost like out of my new kind of RF lens collection for wedding days, um, this is a lens that I feel like I challenge myself to be creative with more so than anything else. I will also never heavy. let it go. It's, yes, it's also heavy and it's also expensive. You don't need this lens if you wanna be a wedding photographer. No one needs this lens. It is definitely a want, not a need. But I could not live without it. <laughs> All right, let's keep going down the lineup. This is the 100 millimeter RF macro. I did a review on this on this channel um, and you will, it, it, the poor thing, I, did, I can't say that it's my favorite. I, I bought this thinking, you know, I'm gonna review this for YouTube, it'll be great. Um, and I look back now and like, it was great to review it for you guys, but I'm not necessarily recommending that other people buy this. And it's because there wasn't a significant enough difference from the EF with the mount versus the RF version to, to spend the money on it, quite honestly. And think about the percentage that I use this on a wedding day. I use it in the beginning of the day for rings and small earrings. Like, is that worth an investment in a completely different RF lens? I just don't think so. So I do have this as a lens, but if you, in my new lineup, but it's not something that I think, you know, looking back, if I wasn't a YouTuber, I'm not a YouTuber. YouTuber! I am, I am not a YouTuber. I'm just a girl with a YouTube channel. I'm not a YouTuber. I'm just a girl. I'm just a girl. <laughs> But if I didn't have a YouTube channel, um, I, I wouldn't own this lens, if I'm being honest. I just, Ty made me do it. I don't need that lens. But you do need a macro lens in your wedding lineup. You do need that. Do you need the RF version? No, you don't. But it is a part of my collection, so I have to include it in this video. Okay, moving on. Next lens. This little guy, this little guy needs to have its own video, but we have not had time to do that yet, but I will. This is the RF 70 to 200. This is the RF, the old version. This is like, it actually looks older, it looks faded, and it looks ancient compared to this little guy. Um, and I, I'm excited to break this down for you, but this is not the video for that because there's a lot that needs to be said. Um, but I've been using the RF for the last, I don't know, maybe three or four weddings. And, um, and I do really like it. I think one of the reasons I like it, so I love the size change, I really do. Um, is it necessary? in order to have great images at this focal length on a wedding day to have the RF version? No. I, again, this was a purchase because I do this on my YouTube channel. You YouTuber! But I, I will say I've got some fun stuff to talk about with this. So um, in general though, when you're thinking about your lineup, for me, I love the RF version, but really I, I don't use this a ton. And I didn't use this a ton when I was shooting with my Mark IV. This lens is needed for when you show up to a Catholic ceremony and you're in the back of a cathedral. This is necessary when you show up to a 400 person wedding outside and you're at the back of the aisle and you, you need to zoom in and get tight shots. This is necessary when you're in a big reception and you have to stand far away from toasts that are happening and you need to get a motion. This is a necessary lens. It's not my favorite. I, I really do think that's a good example of the definition of why it's in my lineup is it is it is used out of necessity, not creativity. So when I am forced to shoot with this, I, I enjoy it and appreciate this lens more than I appreciated this one. And I think it's because, yeah, they're, they're very comparable in heaviness, in, in weight. Um, but I think the design, the new design of this, I just prefer to shoot with this and I find myself enjoying shooting with it more than I ever enjoyed shooting with this. Um, I love the way that it doesn't take as much space up in our bags. I, it's just more practical, honestly, in a lot of ways. I'm excited to review this. If you want me to review this and that, that should be a priority on this channel, then let me know in the comments so I can make that a priority the next time we film. Ty also mentioned that a, a reason why I might not mind the weight of this, it, it is, it's comparable. I actually think this is heavier. It's close, it's really close. <gasps> Which is crazy. Um, I'm gonna have like carpal tunnel in my hand when I'm, when I'm 40 or, or 50. 40, 40's coming faster than I think. Oh uh, gosh, okay. So let's talk really quickly about Michael, my second shooter, my husband's bag lineup. He also has a 28 to 70 and he uses this um, almost exclusively on a wedding day. Um, when he 
is not using this. It could be because he's photographing cufflinks um, and he might need a macro. This is the EF macro, 100 millimeter macro. Um, and this normally has an adapter on it just the whole day. We have adapters left from when we didn't own any RF lenses. And so this will live on this lens in his bag all day. And then the other EF lens that he uses um, sometimes is the 135. I actually use this sometimes if I'm in a low light situation where I need some distance, um, some help with distance. So this is the EF 135 2.0 lens and it, it's awesome. It is, it is comparable to when I would use this. The reason I choose this over this is because if, if I'm in a low light situation and I don't want um, to be limited by a 2.8 aperture and I want the 2.0 aperture and I also want the less glass, more light coming in. This is prime, this is not prime. This lens is, it's kind of the forgotten lens, but when it's time to shine arises, it's awesome. We just basically have adapters living um, on both of these lenses the entire wedding day so that we're not fiddling with uh, changing adapters and swapping them out. When we have the adapters and I've switched to RF lenses, it just makes sense to let them live on these. So that is Michael's setup. So I know this is not necessarily a lens, but it is a piece of our equipment on the wedding day and we get questions about it. So I'm trying to answer all those so we have less questions about it. Um, but this is the Canon uh, 600 EX RT2. We've been using these flashes for years. We have like four of them. We normally only use three at a time. And so um, it's worth mentioning for people who always wonder. They are great because they have a radio transmitter built into them and they talk to one another without needing any additional equipment. I will tell you when I switched to this, that is when I became proficient at off-camera flash. Before that, I avoided it like the plague. Like I'll shoot at 8,000 ISO if I don't have to figure out pocket wizards. I hate pocket wizards. Anyway. Let's, I'm not gonna go down that path. I'm sure I'll get comments about that, but I, I don't care what you people think. I don't like pocket wizards. I love these. Uh, last thing, again, this is not part of the lens lineup, but people ask all the time. We're just making this an all-encompassing video. This is what I'm editing with. This is my laptop, new year, new me. This is the brand new MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip. I, do, I really, okay, if you, think, if you think I don't like talking about gear, I really, really don't like talking about computers. But Ty said to let you know, that this is what I'm using and it is fast. It is Lightroom exports noticeably faster um, than my old MacBook Pro. Um, I just edited a huge film in Final Cut Pro for my dad's retirement and it, it managed that so well. I don't think I could have done it on my other laptop without some freezing up issues because of all I mean, it's just hundreds of gigabytes of footage. So Ty has a whole video on this, on the channel where he breaks down the specs of it, why it's why it's a good purchase, why it's a great option for photography. If you hear the like hammering, you hear that? Uh, there's a special project happening in the basement. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, but it does, um, it, it will affect you, which is great. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. That's a surprise that's coming. So anyway, sorry about that. I can't. We do not want to slow down progress down there. So anyway, that that is that is my gear equipment lineup for this year. I'm excited about it. I love that it has been simplified and I love that it's something fresh. I mean, honestly, it's a good shift for me being more of um, an established photographer who's been doing this over a decade. It is fun to have something that has been changed up and uh, honestly feels like something, it's a progressive move forward. This lens lineup feels like it was a, not just a change for change sake, but a change for uh, the sake of efficiency and it's just better gear. A another thing to point out is that this lens lineup, uh, there's nothing else that could really change it for me. The, the only thing that maybe could change is if they come out with an RF version of the 135. But I just told you like, this is like the forgotten lens that only comes out in very rare occasions. So like, I don't really want to spend that money. This does a great job with an adapter. So I don't really know if I even need that lens. So when you think about it, if you are far from having this type of lens collection, that's okay. If you want to start moving this direction as you can afford it, you're moving in a direction to where I, I don't know if I will change anything in this lens lineup. Um, and, until I retire, quite honestly. Like this is this is in for the long haul. Like I made these investments for the long haul and I, I feel really great about it. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you feel uh, more educated about what my transition into being an RF lens user has looked like. If you want more information about any of these lenses, about the R6, about why we use certain lenses, comparing different lenses, they are all linked below. This channel is full of content like that. So there is more information that is 
at your disposal right now. If you want to see um, the review of the 7200 RF lens, put that in the comment section below so we can see that that needs to be a priority. Um, if you have other questions about other things, Ty goes through them, I go through them, when I am not chasing three kids and Michael goes through them as well. And so we love to try to read through every single comment um, and get back to you guys and answer questions and use your feedback to create the content for the future of this channel. So thanks for tuning in. This was fun. Even though I don't like gear, it was fun. <laughs> and I will see you next time. Bye.